It may be 42 degrees here in New York City, but it's time to start wrapping up the winter makes and start knitting for spring. Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Knitty Natty. Today I am wearing my Sea Glass Tee by Wool and Pine Designs. I made it out of a Moonglow Yarn Company advent calendar in 2021 and paired it with Cottonwood Breeze. I'll have the project page linked down below, but this very well could be a great spring piece just depending on where you live in the world. It could be a really good transitional piece. So a few days ago, I found myself starting to scroll through Ravelry, looking at tees and tank tops and adding them to my queue. So I figured now would be a really good time to start planning for spring. What's the weather like where you are right now? Because this morning I woke up and it was snowing <laughs> here and we just spent a week in Austin, Texas where it was warm and I was sitting by the pool. So it may be cold outside, but mentally I am here. Today I'm taking you along as I make some loose project plans for the next few months. We're gonna look at current whips, brainstorm some new projects, and then talk about how to actually plan for that. If you like these types of planning videos, definitely check out my project planning playlist, which I will have linked below. Currently, I have two whips on the needles. I know, it's pretty good, right? <laughs> Not so bad. I've recently knocked some things off of my plate, um, which is why I'm considering just these two things, my current whips. Now you don't really need to start in the current projects in order to plan for projects you're going to cast on in the future. It just depends on what type of knitter and crocheter that you want to be or that you currently are. So know yourself best. Um, but I really like to start here because before I start anything new, I would really like to finish out what I'm working on for the current season. The reason being is that I know myself well enough now that in, if I don't finish these projects, soon and before starting something new and shiny, I will not finish them and they will be frogged and I don't want to do that. I want to finish these things. I like them and I've put a lot of work into them. So I feel like I owe it to myself to plan accordingly to finish up my winter makes before moving on to anything for the spring. So I'm just going to briefly show you the two projects that I'm working on. The first is my Citrine Light, which is a pullover sweater. It is a pattern by Emily Green. We're going to talk about how I'm planning to finish this in the month of March and how I am going to plan out week by week in order to do so. My other project is a Muscleboro hat by Isolde Teague. Now this one I am really unbothered <laughs> about finishing. It's just a project to have on the go. Yes, it is technically a winter make and if I don't finish it in the next few weeks, I, well, that's not true for New York. If I don't finish it in the next couple months, I probably won't be wearing it this season, but I am not super concerned about that. So this one you're not going to find on my project planning list. It's just one of those whips that's just around, good to have for any time I need some easy knitting. Now that I have established which of my whips that I want to complete before moving on to spring, it's time to get to the really fun part, which is brainstorming patterns. When it comes to brainstorming what to work on next, it can be hard because there are so many amazing patterns out there. So I'm going to start first with what I already know. There are two projects that I already have specific yarn for. I've already spent a lot of time thinking about which pattern I want to make. And I know I want to cast these two things on within the next month or so. So I'm going to start there and then kind of build off of that with more uh, like exploration on Ravelry and things like that. So the first pattern I know 100% I am going to be starting very, very soon is the All of the Lights cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. This is a beautiful cable cardigan that I've been wanting to make for years. I would consider this my dream project. So that's gonna be a big part of my plan, something that's a little less movable because I want to prioritize it. I want to make sure it's started. Is it technically a spring knit? Uh, <laughs> 
debatable because it is a big cardigan. Um, and I'm not really super worried about getting it done in a certain amount of time. I just want to start it. So I've actually made a really big step because today I ordered my yarn for it. I'm not going to tell you all the details, but you might have already heard it me share more on the podcast so I will be sharing more as that one comes out. The one other thing that I am definitely going to be working on here very very soon probably as soon as I finish my citrine light sweater I don't want to have too many large project projects on the needles at once which is another reason why project planning can be really helpful um, is a blanket so I am going to be using it's going to be this is not all of the yarn, but my Fangirl Fibers Disney Advent from 2021. So this year is scrap free 2023 for me. So I can't plan for the next few months without including some of the advents and leftovers that I want to use up. You're actually gonna see more leftovers being used in the projects that I'm planning for spring because I'm just in that mode. Like instead of using fresh stash, I would, I am in a place where I can actually start using up leftovers and not feel like I should be working through other yarns, if that makes any sense. So anyway, I've got this all organized in like different bags. This probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I spent a lot of time um, getting everything organized to make a blanket. It is called, I always mess up this name. It's called the Quadrophenia by K.F. Jones. It's a knitted blanket that's knit in four pieces, like four shawls basically. So I think it's going to be a really great blanket to kind of always be working on a different part of it. I can start one part and get to a certain point and then start the other piece and kind of just always keep it fresh. But it's also going to be a really simple project and a longer term project. So just like the All of the Lights card again, I'm mostly concerned with getting this started. I'm not as much concerned with getting it finished in a certain amount of time. And these kinds of timelines are something that I think are really important as I go into the planning portion. That's already two really big projects that are going on to the needles. And I feel like I need some other projects that are a little quicker, that are gonna kind of break things up. And in planning for a season for spring, I'm looking at several months, I'm not getting overly bogged down by like, okay, but what am I gonna do every week? And like, will this actually all be done in the spring? I'm just having a good time right now. I'm getting all of the joy of thinking about knitting and crocheting these things and not the stress of like actually having to execute it, that's gonna come in the planning part. It's okay right now. Just, I feel like just have fun and like brainstorm and look. Sometimes it's like window shopping. You just need that <laughs> in order to like make yourself or like feel a little bit excited about your knitting and crochet again. And then you get that energy in order to finish projects you already have and then make a choice on the new things. So. Here is my current working stash. So one thing that I am wanting to use in the next couple of months is another Fangirl Fibers advent I have. This one was um, sent to me by Emily last summer. It is a Pokemon advent calendar. With this one, I actually have plans for it too. It's just a little later on down the road, but I wanna make a blanket finally for toaster. This is gonna be a crochet blanket. It is the Crochet Advent Baby Blanket by Lucienne Crochet. And I think it's gonna be so fun out of these Pokemon yarns. I know you can't really see them that well in the bag, but they're very, very like grouped by different types of Pokemon. And it's gonna be just really fun to like go through and relive opening this advent calendar up. I have some other yarns in here that I would like to use. So, this yarn I have no plans for right now. Kent actually bought this yarn and it's like stuck in my stash right now because I don't have a black yarn to go with it. He wants a hat with this and a black yarn. So I'm not gonna worry about that one right now. I wanna make spring tops and I have some yarn here that I think will be perfect for it. So I have this yarn from a homespun house it was the full skein in last year's 2022 advent calendar. And you may be thinking, well, can you really make a top with one skein? 
and it just depends. It depends on, of course, the size you're making, the fit of the tank top, which a lot of the tops that I see for summer are negative ease, um, so they don't take a ton of yarn. And then, of course, if it doesn't have sleeves and things like that, um, I'm planning on maybe adding another yarn. I need to grab it so I can show you. So that one I'm kind of like brainstorming for a top because I think it would be really, really fun for summer. I just recently finished a crochet blanket and I have all this extra yarn. This one, I don't really know if it would be the best. I mean, I'm actually wearing this one right now, so I shouldn't say that. It's Cottonwood Breeze <laughs> by Moonglow Yarn Company, but I don't really know if I want to use these together in a top. However, I have this and another half skein that I have stored somewhere else just because it wasn't staying on the shelf as well. I think this would make a really fun top and I have a ton of yarn. Definitely can do a short sleeve top in my size. So I'm gonna be looking at some things in order to use up, I think both of these yarns. I've been playing around on Ravelry and looking at a couple of designers and their patterns. Um, I picked them specifically for a few reasons. So there's two designers I've really been looking at. The Little Wolf Knits, Brianna Lupino, and Jesse Made Designs. I really like both of these designers because they have a lot of contemporary, is that the right word? Current pieces um, that are uh, like simple, but still like fun and modern. And I think they're really cute. And they have lots of pieces for um, warm weather, like tanks, short sleeves, um, things like that, that I'm just really attracted to and don't use a ton of yarn. But the other reason I like both of these designers is that they are size inclusive and include many different sizes in their um, pattern and in their tests and models. So I really appreciate that about both of them. And then of course, I just have to say <laughs> that the Little Wolf Knits Brianna is my friend. And so of course I love her stuff and support her stuff. So there's a little disclaimer there, but she didn't ask me to say any of this. So <laughs> just an FYI. Okay, so let's take a look into my queue here. So whenever I really think I might make a pattern on Ravelry, I love to come and add it into my queue rather than just my favorites. It's a smaller list for me and it helps me decide on things. So you'll see in here my All of the Lights cardigan. You'll see the Crochet Advent Baby Blanket. We're not talking about the flares right now, but maybe I'll come back to this later. My Quadrophenia Blanket. And then there's a few new things down here that I added in the last couple days that I would love to get your opinion on. So first up is the Diaphanous Raglan by Jesse Made Design. So you can see here that the pattern one is a like long, what are those called? Bishop sleeves or something, I don't know. Th this pattern is really cool because it has a lot of different combinations of like you can crop it, you can do a full length or, and you can do a bunch of different sleeves. There's short sleeves, there's sleeves in like the mohair. Um, I've just seen a bunch of different ways to do it. And just a tip for any project that you're considering, my favorite thing is to go on to Ravelry and then switch over from the pattern page to the project page and start looking through there to see if there's any um, anything I need to know about the pattern or if I see any examples of color, fit, and style that I really, really like. So I'm thinking about doing the short sleeve version for this and I want to use this yarn. <laughs> I just think it'll be really cute in a top. Um, I don't know exactly how it's going to knit up, but my gosh, it is the, it is so soft. What is this base? 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. So it's a base I use a lot, but I don't know what it is, camera, <laughs> what it is about this in particular that's just like extra, extra soft. It feels so good. So this is not technically a remnant or a leftover or anything. But because the pattern has those beautiful fluffy sleeves, I do have some leftover yarn. You may recognize this from my Alpen Glow. I'll put a picture of that right here. Um, the Alpen Glow sweater I knit last September and it only needed a little bit of this yarn. This is actually a Surrey. It is from the Little Wolf Knits and it is called Ballet Slippers. This yarn is available. Um, right now if you like this color. So I kind of thought that these might pair well together. 
I need to actually like swatch with it and see if I like it. Cause this, imagine this on the body. Hold on, can I like get up a little more? We have good light today. Thank you, cloudy day. Imagine this on the body and this on the sleeves. Thoughts? Maybe? What do we think? <laughs> and I figured since I have a lot of this left, I'll have no problem doing short sleeves with this. I need to really look into this pattern and see if this is a possibility, but that's not what today's about. I'm just brainstorming and getting some ideas out there. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of like, how much yarn do I need for projects that I'm not starting this month. <laughs> so don't overwhelm yourself if you're doing some project planning. But I feel like this, will work because look how close it is to that color that's going to be coming through in the yarn. So um, the project that I'm kind of like looking at, like I looked through the project pages for the Diaphanous Raglan is this person's right here. Um, they did a, I think a full length top with the, um, with the flutter sleeves, I believe it is. And of course, when I start to work on this, I'll, I'll get all the information correct. Um, but I really like how theirs came out. Of course, theirs is two of the same color, so it's a little bit different, but I think it could be really fun. So first project for spring and summer I'm thinking about is this beautiful pink top. Now for my other yarn, and I did find <laughs> the other half skein. I have two and a half skeins of this, so should be plenty to do a tank top or a short sleeve top, um, a lot more than the first yarn that I had. But I am between two patterns by the Little Wolf Knit. So I would love your opinion on which one you think would be best for this. This yarn to me, this color feels kind of dressy. Um, so it feels more like less like an everyday top and more like something kind of special. So I picked these two patterns for something that would feel a little bit dressier, at least in my wardrobe, because for me wearing a hand knit item is getting dressed up. Most of the time I'm wearing t-shirts and joggers and working from home. So the first pattern that I'm looking at is the Beachcomber Tank. It's a high neck, simple silhouette tank that you can do cropped or full length. I looked through a lot of project pages here and noticed that the armhole is pretty deep. It's kind of like one of those throw over a, um, like a sports bra or like a cuter, like camisole kind of thing because it does come deep on the sides, maybe over a bathing suit. But I was thinking I might play with it a little bit. I haven't looked at the pattern yet and maybe see if I can raise that armhole because I know for me, I'm probably going to wear a regular bra <laughs> and I don't wanna be fussing around with like covering up or anything. So I may play with this pattern a little bit. I think that the high neck though and like the rest of it just looks a little dressy. It'd be really fun for summer and for spring. Um, so I really like this pattern and I think it'd be a quick knit as well. The other one I'm looking at is the Sea Breeze top. This one is really fun because it has a lot of different options on it as far as if you put ruffles on it or not. And I like ruffles. So if you don't like ruffles, you're probably not gonna like this top, but I'm a big ruffles fan. So in the pattern photo, um, Brianna has the like most dramatic ruffles, I think is what it's called. They're gonna like all the way down. Um, there's also options to just have the ruffles here on the um, straps, which I think would be really, really cute and for them to be less ruffly. But I think I might be leaning towards this top because it's just fun. Like it's so dressy, it's so fun. Um, and again, this yarn to me seems like a little bit of a, like a fancier vibe. I've got plenty of it, so I might as well throw a lot of this yarn into ruffles and use it up. But I think it would be fun to kind of have the the sleeve ruffles. I'm not sure I want the ruffles all the way down, but if I do a sleeve ruffle, I or a strap ruffle, I think it could cover up um, bra straps enough to not have to like widen the strap or wear a strapless bra because I am not doing that. <laughs> I am over that, um, but it's a really, really cute top. Um, so let me know what you think about both of those um, designs. If you wanna see more of both Jessie Made and um, The Little Wolf Knits, Brianna Lapino, I will have um, all of the patterns that I'm looking at linked down below and you can move through there on Ravelry to their main project pages, pattern pages rather, and they have tons and tons of options. Now that I have a really good idea of what projects I want to make, it is time to make a plan. I want to preface this by saying I don't think you need to plan specifically in this way. And if 
planning for your knitting or crochet doesn't work for you, then absolutely don't do it. But I want to show you like one way to do things that may help you figure out a way that you really love. I found that planning my knitting and crochet has actually made me feel freer rather than more stuck. The more that I've done this, and it's been really only over the last year that I've done it in a specific way, the more that I've learned about myself and I'm starting to be able to avoid projects, yarns, and things that I really don't want to do. My plans are always just an outline and they can be moved and changed and tweaked at any time. I can change my mind, but just having it all written out on paper gets it all out of my brain and leaves me to just do the fun part, which is the knitting. The other great benefit I think to planning things out is that it helps remove any um, unattainable expectations. So I always feel like I'm gonna get a thousand projects done in a year. And then when I write out everything that I would like to do, I'm able to see what's actually realistic and then choose if I really wanna get something done and for a specific event or something, how can I make that happen? And do I really want to make that happen? So with that being said, it's time to grab your notebook and let's head to the table and make some plans. I'm going to start with just a big overview on the next few months. And when I think about this, I'm going to think about it as in a perfect world. I'm not going to worry about like, okay, is this actually going to be realistic, et cetera. I'm just going to get it all out. Like if I had magical knitting capabilities, <laughs> what would I want to get done? So we're going to leave some space here for March, April, and... May, because we still have um, some of March left as I am recording this. Okay, so looking at my projects here, I know that I want to start my blanket, my Quadrophenia in March. I also want to finish my Citrine Light in March. Ideally, I would start my All of the Lights in April. And then I think it'd be really fun to go ahead and get one of these spring tops on the needles. And since April's still pretty cold here, I think I'll say the diaphanous raglan would be my first choice to like start in April, maybe start and finish it, ideally. Again, this is just playing around. Let your imagination go wild. I would really like to finish the Quadrophenia in April. Again, I don't know if this is realistic yet. We'll get there um, because I want to start my next blanket, the um, Crochet Advent Baby Blanket. Okay, don't worry about this. I'm not writing it down exactly right, but I'd like to start and finish it in May, ideally. That would be like a perfect world. And then I think I'll save whatever tank I end up choosing for May. It will be getting warmer by this point and, you know, I can kind of reevaluate then. Um, one other thing I kind of like to look at is any new projects that I'm starting, like when I'm going to swatch them, but I'm going to put that in the month by month plan. Now we're really diving into it. Let's look at the remainder of March. So when I'm filming this, we still have three weeks of March left. I know that's not the case anymore, but I wanna show you just quickly how I set things up and then we're gonna fully do April. Normally I would not do two months at a time. I would just do one month at a time, but I wanna show you fully in this video. So I'll probably end up redoing my April plans at some point. So the first thing I do is I literally just get a clean page in my notebook, I write the month at the top, and then I put an overview here. The overview is the same thing that we were doing when we were brainstorming, just putting any projects that I have on the needles or on the mind <laughs> and list them here, and then I can select from there what I actually want to work on. So something else I really like to do is write in the dates for each week and kind of make a goal for each week. My preferences for the dates is to do a Monday to Sunday because I usually find myself like, wrapping up knitting goals on the weekend. So that kind of works for me. So we're going to say that this is March 13th, which is a Monday through the 19th, the following Sunday. This one is going to be 
March 20th through the 26th. And then this last one will be March 27th through April 2nd. And that gets me all the way through to April. So taking the projects that I have on the needles and wanting to cast on, I've got my Citrine Light, I have my Muscle Burrow, and I have my Quadrophenia that I'd like to start after the Citrine Light. So. I ask myself always, do I have any deadlines? And the only one that is really coming to mind is my citrine light because I want to finish it in the month. So I think here we'll just focus on how do I plan out finishing a project and then we'll move over to April and I'll show you like fully how I do a full month. So I want to finish my citrine light. I've got three weeks in order to do so by my deadline. This is where I find out if the plan is actually realistic or not. So for citrine light, I still need to do one entire sleeve and the body. So looking at the time that I have, it's kind of making sense to me that I dedicate one week to a sleeve and two weeks to the body. So I think I like to go ahead and get the second sleeve out of the way. I recently finished the first sleeve. I remember picking up the stitches and everything that I did. So while it's fresh on my mind, I think I'm going to make this next week sleeve week. And I'm just going to write in sleeve two here. I could write citrine light whatever. I, I know what it means. You can be as detailed or as beautiful as you want it to be. Then for this week, I'm going to say body part one. And for this last week, I'm going to say body part two, the ribbing at the bottom. That's honestly what I'll probably spend most of the week doing. And I also like to get a little more specific here. I haven't measured it. Um, I will go and measure it, but I believe I need to do another seven inches. So I could even write for myself like three and a half inches, three and a half inches. And actually looking at this, I realistically may finish this before this week, which is totally fine. But this is just one way to kind of take a project if you know you want to finish it by a certain time, either just to keep the motivation going or to just get it done for an event, this is one way to look at things and I find it super helpful. Last thing here, I just want to flip over to April and show you a full month. I've already written in everything here. I know in my notebook that I can like skip three lines between each week. I've already got the dates in here. This is just a format I find really, really works for me. So let's look at April. I would, again, not particularly plan this far in advance. I'd probably do this more like in the last week of March, um, whereas right now we're like in the middle of March, but I'm close enough to kind of have an idea. So I know the projects I'm going to have on my needles, if all goes to plan, is the Quadrophenia blanket. I know I want to start my all of all of the lights. I'm pretty sure I'll still have my muscle bur burrow. Speak, Natalie. And then I can flip back here to see what were my other plans. Uh, maybe the diaphanous raglan. So maybe diaphanous raglan. And let's just let's just see what we can do with this. So again, I ask myself, are there any deadlines that I want to meet? And I do want to finish this by the end of the month. So I could work backwards and I could put finish quadrophenia. Hopefully I'm spelling that correctly. And then I can work backwards with the time that I have to see like what would I have to do each week in order for that to happen. And then as the weeks go by, I, I see if I met that goal. And if I haven't met that goal, then I think, okay, well, it's probably not going to happen. I need to readjust my deadline and everything. And these deadlines are just um, my own personal things. They're not really anything that has to be done. I'm not gifting anything. I just have a big goal of getting all of my advents used up. And in order to do that, I want to stay on top of my advent knitting. So let's just say, for example, um, there's four parts of this quadrophenia. 
blanket. And I don't think I can do one part per week without not doing anything else, like no other knitting and nothing else. So that's probably not gonna be realistic. I'll probably need two weeks at least for each of these quads. So let's work backwards. This would be, um, let's say, can you see that? Sorry. This would be like quad four, part two. So this one would be quad four, part one. That's really sloppy handwriting, but maybe you get what I mean. This would be quad three, part two. Man, it's really hard to do this and think about it at the same time. And then this one would be quad three, part one. So that tells me that in order to get to here, I should have started this a couple of weeks ago right? Does that make sense? The working backwards thing. So you know what? I will rework my quadrophenia. I'm kind of thinking now that in March, I maybe should start it in this week. Um, so if I do, and I do the quadrophenia, um, oh my goodness, Natalie, what's happening? Quad one, part one, then I could do quad I'm really having a hard time with cues. <laughs> quad one, part two, and then I will see what happens. And that's why I don't wanna plan April too far in advance. I'll see how this goes and I'll come back to it. Okay, <laughs> bad example, but this is kind of what, like, why I do this. And you can always rewrite it and change things and cross things out, it's not a big deal. Okay, so as far as the All of the Lights cardigan goes, I definitely want to start this in April. So I'm going to put on here, cast on All of the Lights. I have no stress about getting this done in a certain amount of time. It's probably going to be finished sometime in the warmer weather. I just want to get it done by fall. So that's all I'm going to put. I'm just going to put cast on. I'm not going to worry about anything else. Now, the other thing I want to do is make these spring makes. So if I want to cast on the diaphanous raglan, I really don't want to be starting it like when I'm starting something else. I want to kind of, one, leave a little space for the time that it takes to start a new project. But I also like to spread out my cast-ons to increase the excitement of my knitting. It's fun to be casting on new things every couple of weeks. It's just It just is. So maybe I'll wait until this later part of the month to cast on my diaphanous raglan. Again, this is just a diaphanous raglan. This is just a, an outline. I can come back and change it, and 100% of the time, I change things. So if I wanna cast it on this week, then I wanna make sure the week before that that I swatch for it. I've just found that if I leave myself um, lots of time to start a project, I actually don't mind doing that prep work, the swatching, the changing needle sizes, the winding the yarn. If I give myself ample time, it doesn't feel as much like it is a chore. Okay, so this is literally what I would start with. Sometimes when I plan a month, I don't even write anything into the third and fourth weeks because I just want to see how things go and then I'll go from there. I love planning projects this way. And so if you want to give it a try or make little tweaks, I would highly recommend it. <sighs> It seriously feels so good to have a plan. I can't even explain what it does to take the mental load out of your brain and just write it on paper. It frees me up just to work on things. These plans will 100% change and that's okay. Sometimes I adjust my knitting to prioritize things that are in my plan. And sometimes I change my plan to fit my mood and my schedule better. I hope you enjoyed this planning video. There are more planning videos linked down below and let me know what you are planning to work on for spring and summer. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.